Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we are going through Art of Electronics exercise 2.3. Similar to the last exercise, this is looking at a pulse generator circuit. However, there is an additional component in this circuit that helps to improve the performance. We'll talk more about that later on. The exercise itself is asking us to elaborate on a sentence that's above the question. Note that we've chosen R5 relatively large, R5 being this component here, to minimize output loading while still ensuring full saturation of Q3, which is this component over here. So we need to elaborate on this sentence, but there are also a few more questions included with the statement above. So the first question is, what is the output voltage during the pulse? And didn't slightly make sense to me, but slightly reduced owing to the loading effects of R5. So it's basically asking us, why is this output level that we see over here reduced slightly because of this R5? And then the last part of the question is, what is the minimum beta required of Q3, so this BJT over here, to guarantee a saturation during the output pulse? So these two questions we'll answer towards the end. Before we dive into these questions, I want to quickly explain how this circuit works. Obviously, without Q3 and R5, we've already spoken about how this circuit works in a lot of detail and how to calculate the pulse width. So check out my 2.2 exercise video on my channel if you want to learn more about that. But I'll quickly go over this circuit and how Q3 and R5 help. So let's start from this side over here. Obviously, we have a 5 volt power supply. So on this side, the user can press a button or something to trigger a positive voltage on this side. Let's call it 5 volts. So when this is 5 volts, you basically have 0 0.7 volts over here. So that's 0.7 volts. So you get a certain amount of current going in this direction. So that current would be 5 volts from this side minus 4, 0.7. So 4.3 divided by 10,000. So 430 microamps roughly, if I'm calculating that properly. It doesn't matter really. But then this transistor will amplify that current, which is basically this path over here. Let's say the transistor has a beta of 50. Whatever current is going down here will be amplified by the beta, which is going down this path over here. When that happens, obviously you get a voltage drop across this resistor, depending on the current. When the switch wasn't pressed, the transistor was basically off. So you can ignore this from the circuit. So that means that this capacitor was connected to this resistor to 5 volts. When the capacitor is fully charged, there will be very little current going down this path. That means that the voltage on the capacitor will be plus 5 and 0 0.7 over here. So what happens next? We've obviously pulled this down to, to ground. So this voltage goes negative. And when this voltage is below 0 0.7 volts, the transistor will switch off. The resistor R3 will start to charge the capacitor, which is obviously if this switch is maintained on, then this will obviously pull it to ground basically where this component R5 and Q3 become advantageous to this circuit. But right now, let's just look at this if we'll come to this at the end. But if the switch is maintained on, then the current path is basically in this direction and the capacitor starts to charge up from negative 5 volts until this transistor switches back on. So when the transistor is off, you obviously get, you get a potential divider between R4 and R5. So you get some voltage over here. Obviously the smaller resistor is over here. So V out is going to be equal to the potential divider voltage that's appearing here. The voltage across the two resistors is going to be 5 minus 0 0.7 because of this transistor. So we can do a potential divisor equation with 4.3 volts. So the V out voltage is equal to 4.3 volts, which is the voltage that appears on both nodes, multiplied by R5 divided by R4 plus R5. And then in the end, we need to remember to add this back on as we've got a voltage offset here. So that's what happens when the pulse becomes on. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of a voltage drop on this resistor. So let's say if that red line is 5 volts, then there's going to be a little bit of a difference between the output and the 5 volts. And that's because of the current going down this path over here. So that current will induce voltage drop on R4, which will load our output so we won't get full 5 volts on our pulse width. Now let's quickly talk about R5 and then Q3 and what that does. So obviously when we first talked about the user pressing the button. Now if this component 
R5 and Q3 weren't there and the user releases the button, the output pulse will turn off immediately. However, with the introduction of Q3 and R5, we basically feed back the positive pulse to maintain this level at ground with this over here. We need to make sure that we're running sufficient current down this path though, so that we saturate this BJT and that we have 5 volt drop on this resistor. So now that the circuit's explained, I'm just quickly going to talk about this part. So the statement is saying that we have chosen a large value for this resistor to minimize output loading while ensuring that Q3 is fully saturated. So what does that mean? Well, when Q2 is off is when our pulse is high. The output signal is taken from the bottom of R4, which is over here. And that forms a potential divider with R4 over here and a 0.6 or 0.7 volt drop with this VBE over here. So if you think about 0.7 volts here and 5 volts over here, you've got a potential divider between these two, which will define your maximum. So if we turn Q2 off completely, so basically ignore it from this circuit, we get a 20 to 1 ratio. So that is the amount where our signal won't fully reach 5 volts on the positive line. On the negative side, we are basically saturating Q2, so and that is grounded. So that will be completely going to zero where this will be ignored. So on the downside, we won't have the issue of loading effect, but on the positive side, our 20k resistor will represent a load to this output signal. And obviously you can calculate the current going down this by doing V equals IR. So the current going down this path is going to be 5 minus 0 0.7 divided by R4 plus R5. So 4.3 divided by 21k. So you can calculate the current going down this path. Now if you do Ohm's law on R4, you can calculate the voltage drop on this resistor and that gives you your loading effect. Now let's quickly look at the second part of the question, which says that we need to ensure full saturation of Q3. And essentially what we want to do is make sure that this point goes to ground, even if this is released. So this is the advantage of this part of the circuit here. So if we press and release this, we need to make sure that this transistor over here can hold this line to ground. So it doesn't change the timing parameters that we have calculated for the pulse width. And in order to do that, we would need to run a certain amount of current down this path to ensure that R5 drops 5 volts. Obviously, we can calculate that by doing 5 divided by 1K, which would give us a current of 5 milliamps. So if you are to run 5 milliamps down this path, we know that we will get 5 volts drop across this resistor and this will bring this down fully to ground. So essentially what it's saying is that we need to make this small enough to provide sufficient current that the beta of this transistor can amplify this current to get at least 5 milliamps. And we need to make it large enough so that it doesn't affect the positive side significantly to our requirements. So hopefully that answers first part of the question sufficiently. I've removed all the scribbles for the drawing and let's talk about the middle question. So what is the output voltage during the pulse? And why is it slightly reduced loading effects? So I briefly spoke about it when I explained the circuit, but let's do the calculation. So when I did my explanation, obviously I'd said that the voltage drop across the two resistors is going to be 4.3 volts. That's because we have 0 0.7 volts here and we have 5 volts over here. So let's write down our VS, which is 5. Our VBE is 0 0.7. So the voltage across so V, R4, and R5 is 5 minus 0 0.7. So we have 4.3 volts on R4 and R5. So next we can do the potential divider equation to calculate the voltage on R5. So V R5 is equal to 4.3 times R5 divided by R5 plus R4. Obviously, I don't have R4 and R5 values in at the moment, but I'll just add them. So R4, R5. Obviously, R5 is equal to 20,000. And R4 is equal to 1,000. Now, to calculate the output voltage, which is over here, we need to add the voltage across the R5 plus the voltage on this transistor because of the forward diode that's in the VBE junction. 
v out equals v b e plus v r five, which is equal to this plus this. So that gives us an output voltage of 4.8 volts when the pulse is on. And when the pulse is off, this Q2 is fully on. So that means that it'll be very close to zero volts anyway. That does depend on the amount of current that can be passed through to this from R3. But you can see that R5 provides the loading effect on the output. Now, I've done this in Excel so that we can vary this live. So if you were to change the value of this resistor, we can see that the output gets closer and closer to 5 volts. That's because the loading effect from R5 is lower. But there's also a disadvantage to increasing R5. Which brings us nicely to the second part of the question, which is what is the minimum beta required for this Q3 over here? To guarantee that it's in saturation when the output is turned on or the output pulse is active. So let's go back to our Excel. So we know we need to bring this to, the, to ground to zero volts. And to do that, we need to run a certain amount of current through R2. So the value of R2 is 1000 ohms. We want to drop five volts on R2. So if I write down VR2 that we need, so then we can calculate the current that we need to push through R2 to, in order to do that. So V equals IR. So V divided by R is the I. So IR2 is equal to 5 divided by a thousand which gives us 5 milliamps so we need to push 5 milliamps through this in order to fully saturate q3 or to get the complete 5 volts drop on r2 so how do we do that well we've got a bjt here we know it has a beta value which we need to calculate the minimum value for for this question so if we got 5 milliamps going through here and we know what the current through this path is going to be because all the voltages are defined. So we can do that with this calculation over here. So we know that, let me change this back to 20,000. The current through this is going to be equal to 4.3. There's multiple ways of doing this, but the first, one of the ways, IQ3 base. So that's the current on Q3 through the base is equal to 4.3 divided by this plus this, which is basically R4 and R5. So we know the voltage drop on R4 and R5 is 4.3 volts. We know the resistance value. So Ohm's law again, we, we divide by R is equal to I. So that gives us a current of 205 microamps. So to get from here to here, we need a certain beta value for this or the gain value. So what we can do is basically divide this by this, which gives us the minimum beta required in order to fully saturate Q3. So this is because we have 200 microns going down this path. We need to amplify that by 24 times or 24.4 times in order to get five milliamps. If you get five milliamps down this path, then R2 is going to be basically dropping five volts and this will be going to zero. So hopefully that all makes sense and that basically covers all three parts of this question but in order to kind of explain some parts better so this is the second part i've drawn a simplified model over here so you obviously you got that 0.7 volts from over here you got the 20k and you got the 1k hopefully that makes it a lot easier to see what i was doing in terms of the output voltage calculation so you got obviously 5 volts so across these two you got 4.3 and you basically calculate the voltage drop on R5 and add it to 0.7 and that gives you your output voltage. And it also described why R5 creates a loading effect and R4 is basically our output impedance for the circuit. So you can basically ignore everything else when you are looking at the output voltage during the pulse because this is fully off. So none of this is coming into play. Now for the third part of the question, I've just got the calculations for the beta or the minimum beta required during the output pulse. Obviously, we went through this calculation on Excel, but essentially what we are doing is calculating the current through the Q3 base because we know the voltage drop on R4 and R5, which is 4.3. So that's over here. And the base current can be calculated 
with ohms law so 4.3 divided by 21k which is the total resistance of r4 and r5 which gives us 204.8 microamps next we can work out what current we need to fully saturate q3 and get our 5 volt drop on r2 which is basically 5 milliamps and the calculation is vs divided by r2 and then we can calculate the beta required by doing IC, which is the collector current of the BJT. So collector is this pin over here. The emitter is this and the base pin is this. So 5 milliamps divided by 204 microamps or 5,000 microamps divided by 204.8 microamps. It's good to keep it in the same units. Gives us a minimum required beta of 24.4. So thank you for watching today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Obviously, I'm still going to be doing Art of Electronics videos. I'm going through exercise 2.4 next. So watch out for that video. If you have any feedback for me, please let me know in the comment section below as well. If you think I should be going into more detail over here about BJTs and things, then please let me know. But I think there are hundreds of videos on YouTube already that describe how BJTs work, describe the pins for BJTs and things like that. So obviously we are trying to focus on circuits now that we're getting into the meaty questions of actual analog circuits on auto electronics. One of my next videos is going to be doing a build for this circuit. So that'll be interesting. So make sure you check that out as well. Again, thank you for watching and see you next time.